What up, ladies and gentlemen? Today we are back for another adventure. So, for some reason, I'm just like very fascinated by servers. So, I have a bunch of Dell Power Edge servers just chilling. Um, one I have uh, True NAS scale running on. Um, this is my workstation. It's a precision rack. So, it's like fully loaded and it's got a fat GPU in it. And then I have another one I'm building. And so I was just like cruising eBay for a little bit for more parts. And I stumbled across some Xeon processors. So check these out. These are the gold 6132s. I believe these are 14 core. But I got these for 10 bucks each shipped. So that's right, two processors for 20 bucks. So you can pick up these Power Edge R440 racks uh, as bare bones for right around 200 bucks, And you can grab RAM kit really cheap, processors cheap. Uh, you can even grab drives. I don't know where I put all my drives. Um, I think it's in this one. Yeah, you can grab these massive previously used data center drives like 50 bucks a pop so you're just like 10 terabytes so i had a few questions so one of those was well what can you do gaming wise on something like this right obviously this isn't a gaming pc but being able to run six channel ram two processors some blazing fast pcie lanes a uh, sas controller Integrated RAID card. I mean, these things must be, you know, good for something, right? So I'm going to throw these processors in this machine. And I even have a bonus AMD Radeon WX3100 GPU. I'm also going to throw in there. And so I'll test this thing out with, you know, a handful of like lighter games. Obviously, you're not going to be playing any you know, modern AAA titles, because I think this thing, if I remember correctly, this one's the 4 gig variant, so, uh, and it's, I think, from, like, 2017, if I'm correct. Kind of cool, though, so I'm going to go clean up these processors with a little bit of nail polish remover. Um, I got my CPU coolers here, and let's load that bad boy up. For tonight's adventure, we are sipping on the Vogel Family Red. So this is actually pretty smooth. So this is a 2021 from California. So I'm gonna move that over so I don't make a bigger mess. So let's bust into this thing. So pardon the craziness of my workspace. Things have been kind of crazy the past few days to a week. I'm currently doing an engine swap on the car as we speak, so that video uh, you guys will see eventually as well. So here we go, pretty simple. Um, our Power Edge R440, it's a Dell unit. Uh, originally they started making these things in 2017 and produced them all the way up until 21. So I believe this is the 15th generation of Dell Power Edge machines, so it's got some pretty cool features. Um, PCIe and everything kind of pops out somewhat easily so this is where you, know, you drop in your graphics card if you do want to run that or you can run an external PCA riser so your ram is covered up by this little shroud to help push the airflow through there so i'm waiting on a few other fans to come in so i ended up pulling uh, two fans for that other machine that's below it as uh, that one i did upgrade from a single cpu to a dual so our RAM, we are running uh, two sticks of 32 gig uh, DDR4 ECC 2666. So that's kind of standard. Uh, eventually, I'd like to throw some more RAM here, but for now, I'm just going to leave those two. Getting the CPU side, so we have these pretty cool CPU socket protector plates. Um, definitely, definitely keep those things in there if you're not running a CPU because. There's a tremendous amount of pins in there, and that would really suck if those got damaged. So with the CPU, I'm going to grab some paper towel, and we're going to use some nail polish remover, and just make sure 
the surface of the CPU is clean and also the CPU cooler. So here's our CPU one cooler. So there is a difference between the first and second CPU cooler. Um, they are also numbered and both of these numbered slots, if I'm remembering correctly, both point towards the back of the machine. So with the socket plate removed, it is time to clean up all this gook. So I'm gonna start by taking a half of paper towel and try to wipe off as much of this as I can. With the other half, I'm gonna dose it up with a little bit of nail polish remover. And I'm gonna clean first the CPU, then the CPU cooler. So for these larger Xeon CPUs, I personally prefer to put them in the socket, then put the CPU plate on it, then mount the cooler. Uh, this might not be the necessarily prescribed method, but this seems to work the best for me. And so I'm gonna stick with what works best. So you're gonna have a faint arrow in one of the corners. Uh, you wanna make sure that is pointed towards the notching in the socket. You also have a few little cuts in the side. Um, it's pretty easy to put these in the right way because you can visibly see will it sit or won't it sit. And there we go, we are seated. So we got a latch on one side, and on the other side you just push. And look at that, we are chilling. So then we're gonna put some thermal compound, the MX4. So I've used this stuff in the past on plenty of machines and I'm fairly happy with it. Uh, link to this is in the video description. Try a weird star thing on this one and see what happens. So then again, you're gonna put that numbered socket towards the rear of the machine. And then you're gonna wanna grab a Torx bit to make sure that's all tightened down. So grab your favorite micro screwdriver set from here, you're gonna to wanna to grab your favorite micro screwdriver set. My favorite is linked in the description below. And you're gonna to wanna to equally and evenly tighten both of these screws at the same time. And for the Xeon sockets, you just keep tightening till you bottom out those screws. Again, you want to do this evenly to ensure equal pressure. So if this one is done, that one is done. All right, let's get our second CPU ready, second CPU cooler, and get that seated. So this second one comes with pre-applied thermal paste. Uh, I don't actually remember if these are new or used CPU coolers. Uh, these were also on eBay. I think they were like eight bucks each. If I had to guess, I would say used, but they definitely have some factory pre-applied thermal paste, which we'll see how well it does. Uh, we'll check it with core temp to see what the temperature differences are between CPU one and CPU two. Knowing that CPU one is the one I added a bunch of sloppy thermal paste to. Again, it's kind of crazy. You, know, you can get what would have cost new almost, you know, three to five grand 
uh, now for 10 bucks a pop. Just gonna remove that little sticker on there. And then hit it with a little bit of nail polish remover. And that's a CPU install on a PowerEdge R440. So I might borrow some fans from my other machine uh, just to power this one on so it's not too angry. And now let's see what the temperature differences are between CPU 1 and CPU 2. I'll cap this so I don't make more of a mess. Okay, let's get that top plate. All right, let's fire up this thing and see, is it gonna air out or is everything gonna be good? Just ignore all that. So I did put new RAM in this, so it'll take a second for everything to do its deal happy so far. Oh, that amber light. It's probably going to let me know that the memory has changed. I'll pop this face plate on it just to see what temperature we're running so far. So right now we're sitting at 23 degrees, so this thing is just chilling. And that idle. Ah, it's letting me know. CPU has changed. Yep, RAM has changed. Yep, very good. And here we go. So right now, let's see how much power we're using. So right now, real time, we're using 263 watts. So that's not just the server on that thing. That is also my dream machine and my 48 port PoE switch. And look at that. We are in Windows. So let's see what the task manager is saying now with these new CPUs. Yeah, that's more like it. 28 core, 20 cores total, 56 threads. So those were in fact 14 core CPUs each, which is insane. You can get something like this for $10 each, those CPUs. So it must be doing a Windows update or something. That SSD is just slammed. Putting at our memory, that 64 gig dual 32 gig DIMM modules are doing quite nicely. It's just hanging out. So I'm currently using two of 16. I don't think I would ever use all 16 of something like this just for messing around with. Anyways, I'm going to get this thing connected back up to the internet. I'm going to do a Windows update, make sure it grabs the new drivers, uh, see if these CPUs need any microcode updates. And let's just see what kind of games you can run on something like this. So I'm going to try it first with this integrated GPU. So it has a Maxon, let me pull up the exact name of this thing. Uh, it's got some obscure GPU that I've never even heard of before. So I had a newer PowerEdge R440, a 2021 model, and it actually didn't show any sort of GPU, yet it would play a surprising amount of games just right out of the box on this unknown 
GPU. It wouldn't tell me anything else about, you know, its clock speed, its RAM, nothing. But this one has a, uh, here you go, the Nuviton G200EW3. Matrox, interesting. So yeah, this thing apparently, so let's go into it. Let's see what sort of, what's this thing's deal? So it, apparently it's a PCIe device, yet I haven't been able to find any sort of chipset stuff on the motherboard that looked like a integrated GPU driver or integrated uh, GPU sort of processor. Um, not a lot of info. So I tried running GPU-Z on this thing just to see what would come up. I think I still have it somewhere. So getting into GPU-Z, this thing has absolutely no idea what it is. Um, even when I hit refresh, nothing, has no idea. Look up, nope, nothing to look up. So this is kind of what my other R440 did, but I was still not fully sure what sort of GPU it had in it. But it was surprisingly powerful. Um, it would, it didn't air out. It would basically take whatever game I threw at it. So I tried uh, Fallout 3, Half-Life 2, Portal, Portal 2, even Doom. And it somehow ran all of those games. Now, would I say it ran them well? Absolutely not. It, And even with Half-Life 2, on occasion, I'd just get a full lockup, which I don't know if that was something between some other QPI or other link on the motherboard itself, but Surprisingly, it still chugged along. So let's connect this to internet, make sure all of our updates are in, and let's try to run some games on this thing.